<clears throat> All right, tonight we'll be looking at a little mini amp. Uh, I've probably had for a year, year and a half. It's, um, I think there's a newer version of it, so uh, I think you can still get it, but if you search it, I think newer versions of it come up, which is fine. Like I said, I've said before, I don't always just review new things because I actually bought this amplifier, mini amplifier used, and a couple years from now, someone else might be buying this mini amplifier used and might want to know more about it before they uh, bid on it on eBay or something. So before we start looking at it, uh, let's run down some specs here. It says the power supply range is 12 volts to 25 volts. It has a THD of 0.5%, frequency range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, plus or minus one decibel. Signal to noise ratio of 98 decibels. Input sensitivity, 280 millivolts. Bluetooth transmission distance, they list 28 feet. Uh, speaker impedance range, it can power speakers from 2 ohms to 8 ohms, which is really nice. Although you're not going to see much for 2 ohm speakers out there, but um, definitely 4, 6, and 8. Uh, output power is 50 watts times 2, that is at 4 ohms. So... If you go to 8 ohms, it's probably going to be more like 25 watts times 2. And 6 ohms, you're probably looking at maybe 45 watts times 2, somewhere like somewhere around there. Um, but most people are probably going to have 8 ohm speakers, so you could probably count on more around 25 watts. And this is RMS power. Uh, input modes, it has analog RCAs and Bluetooth. And your Bluetooth name, it pops up. Uh, will be breeze I'm not sure why and then the included power supply is a 19 volt uh, 4.7 amp equivalent uh, coming out to about 90 watts so that's pretty darn good there was another spec up here okay where'd it go uh, yes um, at 50 watts times 2 and a 4 ohms, it's 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz at 0 0.04 THD. Uh, Bluetooth is version 4.0, which is okay. And then it does use the TPA3116D2 amplifier chip, which I guess is worth mentioning for them. Um, now looking at the front here, I think this came in, well, no, I think this one only comes in like this charcoal silver color. You get the Fossey Audio BT-10A, and then there's the TPA-3111, TPA-3116 uh, mini power amplifier, and that's just referring to the deck, or the amplifier chip they're using. And then you have your power on off here, nice metal switch. And then you can see that it says blue there, that's for your Bluetooth. And far as I can tell, the Bluetooth, if this is on, the Bluetooth is on. So if your Bluetooth is on, is turned on, on your phone and you're within range of this thing it's going to try to connect because there's not really any way to turn the bluetooth on and off i mean on your phone you can go in and tell it to disconnect but it's always going to show up uh, on your phone or whatever bluetooth device you're using to you know in within range of this thing and then it's got an analog volume knob uh, as you can see i placed a piece of electrical tape here because it's uh, since it's analog it does have a, a starting a min in a maximum um, but there's no indicator on the knob and you know if you had it here because you're drunk one night partying and then you just shut it off and you know the wife comes out and turns it on the next morning or something she can't tell that you have this thing cranked so uh, having an indicator is nice I mean you can just put a dot on there with a sharpie or whatever I just put a piece of electrical tape on there for now to kind of indicate roughly where my volume at. the volume knob is a nice uh, Obviously, the pot you can kind of tell they put a, a generous amount of grease on it because it's very smooth and thick feeling, which is fine. It's good. It's not going to move. It's very, very smooth and thick feeling. That's what I'm going to go with. Extruded aluminum case, which most of these have. It's kind of like a. These are kind of become like a cookie cutter thing. They all use kind of the same chassis, um, which is fine with me. It's a great chassis. Machined aluminum front, extruded aluminum top and bottom. Even uh, aluminum plate rear. Uh, Bluetooth antenna. Here it kind of moves around. You can uh, unscrew it if you even wanted to. Power plug right here. Um, and 
I th it was, oh, when you go to plug this in with a lot of these mini amps, I'm not sure why, if you know why I put it in the comments, plug the power adapter in here first, then plug it into the wall. If you plug it into the wall first and you go to plug this in here, you're going to get a huge arc. Um, I've never been electrocuted by it, but uh, I'm sure the possibility is there. And it's probably not good for the amp. So always plug in here first and then plug into the wall. And then you got your right and left uh, banana terminals or binding posts and then a right left uh, standard RCA analog in. Now on these banana terminals or binding posts, you know what I'm going to do if you watch my videos. We're going to get some nanner plugs over here. And let's see how far they go in. This is the your more premium banana plug. Oh, it go it goes almost all the way in. It's actually deeper than all these uh, I don't know budget affordable uh, bookshelf speakers that uh, come with a little shallow banana plugs. Look, I mean, look how long that is. It goes all, and it trust me. It doesn't, it's not a, it's not a hollow tube. It doesn't just go through the lamp. It does have a stopping point in there. But yeah, that's just crazy. And then, you know, if you got more of a generic banana plug like these that are a little bit shorter. Yeah. Takes the whole thing. Takes it all. So that's just awesome. And I just need to get, put these put on uh, all these affordable speakers. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what else? QC pass, nothing else special. Power, uh, I bought mine used, that's why I don't have the box. This is the power uh, brick it came with. You see model 90 watt is the model. And then uh, output 19 volt to 4.7 amps, just like they said, which I, I did a little math, comes out to 89.3 or something. But shoot, we'll round up, why not? Call it 90. But you're only ever going to touch that the exceed this is if you're running probably two ohm which i doubt anybody is unless you're just one of those people that are ignorant and just start daisy chaining every speaker you can find at goodwill but if you run an eight ohm speaker this is more than enough because you're not going to ever need it's not ever going to put out 100 watts you're only going to get probably 25 times two on an eight ohm speaker so give me a minute here and uh Raise your hand if you want to see the inside. Okay. Get some uh, get some Allens here, and we'll get it taken apart. Okay. Took the four front screws out. Actually, I don't even think I need to take the bottom ones out. Just the top two, and the top on the rear, and then this top shell should come off. Ah, like that. And you can see it's just an extruded piece of aluminum. And the only reason I know that is because I ran an aluminum extrusion, aluminum extrusion press at one time. There you go. Pretty good little uh, components in there. I couldn't tell you exactly what each one is. But... Um, if this would focus. I'm trying to see the brand on the cap. I'm not seeing anything. Uh... This is where you're that TPA 3116, 3111, ugh, 3116 chip is. That's a tongue twister for me. And here's your Bluetooth chip back here. You see the cord coming from the Bluetooth antenna around over to here. But yeah, um, if you know your electrical components, uh, chime in in the comments. Uh, that's what's on the inside. I, honestly, I'm not going to act like I know what I'm talking about because... Uh, I couldn't tell you if any of this is really good or not. They all look like good components to me, but, you know, who knows. So, uh, and then on the chip there, for anyone that cares, ISSC something. Um, but, yeah, that's it. That's what's on the inside. Let's get it put back together and hook some speakers to it. Oh, and I'll be using uh, just one of these... Uh, RCA to three and a half aux from my music PC to uh, the back of the amp here for my source. Um, just because uh, one of the best uses of this little amp is a little desktop amp uh, to run some uh, 
I don't know, some small bookshelf speaker or something. You could use this in uh, your uh, living room. Granted on what your output sources are, if your TV puts out an analog, uh, you could always buy a little, or if your TV has an optical out, you could always get one of the little optical, those little, they're like a little tiny square box. You can get them on Amazon for like 15 or 20 bucks, converts them optical. It has a little DAC in it, converts optical to uh, your RCAs, but there's many ways you could get signal to this. But in my case, since I use a computer for all my music, I'm just going to plug this into the back of the computer and obviously right there. So hang tight. All right, I got it hooked up down here. It's sitting down here on top of the Behringer 800 little guy. And then uh, I'm just running it off the, the computer here. And this does run to my the Asus Zonar sound card inside, uh, right to the back. And then, uh, oops, ah, it's caught on my foot. Um, I was hooked to these uh, Yamo S803s, so. Give you an idea here. We will turn it up. And I believe these Yamos are considered 8 ohm. I don't know if they actually are. I haven't tested them yet. But I think they are considered 8 ohm. So we will go to half. And that is a decent amount of juice. I will keep talking actually and keep turning this up and see how loud it actually gets. See if you can keep hearing me talk or not. Because it does get pretty loud. But at this level I'm actually not really hearing any distortion and I'll turn it back down now and see I'm trying to keep my voice the same level so let's skip to the next song here <laughs> about three quarters of the way up yeah when I first started <laughs> hooked this up and started playing it and no music would come out of it and I forgot too if your Bluetooth is on on your phone even doesn't matter if you got other stuff hooked to the RCAs on the back no sound will come out of them you whatever device is near this thing Bluetooth has got to be off because otherwise it, it it'll connect to your Bluetooth well I guess your Bluetooth doesn't have to be off it's just got to be disconnected from this device because if your phone or your pad or whatever you're streaming music to from this thing is within range of it and the Bluetooth is on and it's set to connect you won't get any audio out the back, so you always gotta, it's kind of annoying, you can't separately turn the Bluetooth off. You have, you're gonna have to turn it off on, on your uh, device, so. It gets plenty loud. space down here where I have my you know obviously my bigger amplifiers this thing that's about that's about how loud I listen to it on this it 
it's just crazy. Um, uh, I'm assuming this is uh, class D. The amount of power they get out of these little mini amplifiers nowadays. Um, and it sounds just fine. I can't say it's the best amplifier I've ever heard, but for compared to what, you know, I don't know. Not compared, but for what it is, for how small it is, and I don't know. It's just crazy how, uh, how good some of these little mini amplifiers sound now. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with the, you know, Class D getting much, much better and all these amplifier chips and stuff. But, you know, even at 8, if I doubt these speakers are actually 8 ohms, they're probably less than that. But even at, you know, 25 watts RMS times 2 is actually quite a bit of power. A lot of people have been, uh, they've become like miscalibrated to where they think they need you know, at least 100 watts, you know, because all these home theater receivers and other, you know, shelf stereos that Sears and Kmart and all, you know, 700 watts times 10 or blah, 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 you know, or these car, car amplifiers that are, you know, 4,000 watts max, blah, blah, blah. Um, no. Uh, uh, a lot of times, if you had an amplifier that had an actual 100 watts RMS times two, that's a lot of juice. That's, you know, that's quite a bit. Um, if this thing's able to actually dish out 25 times two, which I believe it is because how loud these speakers are getting, uh, clearly, um, I have no doubt that this thing's probably putting out at, probably close to 25 times two at eight ohms. And it's probably close to 50 times two at four ohms. So um, if you had a small room, dorm room, bedroom, you know, smaller living, uh, living room, I don't know, whatever, smaller rooms or whatever, and you want a nice little amplifier or computer desk, uh, nice little amplifier to power some uh, bookshelf speakers. Heck, you could probably even power some bigger speakers. Um, um, you could get this one, but there's many other ones out there just like it. Um, yeah, the, I, I know a lot of people don't think these little mini amplifiers can dish out some music, but man, they sure can. Uh, I'm not going to, this is just obviously off my computer. I'm not going to do a Bluetooth off my phone because I'm using my phone to record this video, guys. So, and it's 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 super simple. You turn your Bluetooth on on your phone. You turn this thing on. You look in your Bluetooth devices. It'll show up as that, whatever it said it was. Just look back in the video because I forgot already. But it'll show up as that and just hit connect and it connects it i've never had a problem getting the bluetooth to connect on this thing and even the audio through the bluetooth 4.0 sounds just fine um obviously we're not we're not talking uh in a audio file realm here but for a day-to-day -day use good quality little amplifier it's going to dish out probably more than enough volume for most people um yeah this little guy is uh, a good deal I know there's a newer version of it, um, and I know there's there's many different versions of them, ranging probably from around fifty to hundred bucks. Um, uh, so far, I haven't had one that I've been disappointed with. So, hopefully, this helps you guys out if you're looking at one of these used online for a good price. I think I got this one used for like forty bucks because the guy said he couldn't get it to work or something, and it turned out the on the power brick here, the cord, the actual power, it plugs in here and then goes up here to the wall. That cord was actually bad, which is quite rare. Um, and what I did, well, the first thing I did is I plugged it into the wall and unplugged this from the power brick, and then I just took my meter and put it on here, and I wasn't getting any voltage. <laughs> so it instantly told me the there was something wrong with the original cord. And this cord is just from like a an old laptop, basically. So, easy fix, got it for cheap. So, yeah, mini amplifiers, man, cool. Like, subscribe, post in the comments if you have any other little questions about this uh, little guy or other little amplifiers like it, and uh, yeah, good night.